Good day and welcome to another trading video with Monaco Daniel. In the last video, we talked about the very basis on which technical analysis and trading is built on, which is candlestick analysis. And I went on to mention that a um, series of candlesticks are what makes up price charts. And our aim as technical analysts and traders is not just to understand the whole concept of candlestick analysis, but to be able to to analyze historical data presented in price charts with the aim of projecting the near future or long term price movements and then take a, a trade in that direction. So basically, as traders, our responsibilities, what we aim at achieving is understanding price charts and then use our understanding of this price chart to project where we see price in the near future yeah and um in doing that one very important thing that i find very important and i use as a confluencing tool at times is um, market structure to be able to effectively trade price action it is very important that you understand market structure where the market is headed where the current situation of the market as well as as well as how to use a trend line yeah so that's basically what i'm going to be discussing in this video and i'll be looking um implicitly at market structures market movements as well as um how to draw a trend line without taking too much of our time let's just head straight to what we have for today so basically market structure market movement are generalized into two which is trending and ranging markets yeah in if, if we're going to look at it at a, at a much broader scale and then we just narrow it down we'll be looking at trending markets as well as is um a ranging market structure this video is not aimed at talking about ranging market because the aim of almost every trader or the aim of my own style of trading is to trade LD market trends, not ranging and choppy markets. Yeah. So trending markets are basically divided into two. If we are going to break that down a bit further, market structures or trending markets are can be narrowed into uptrend and downtrend markets in uptrend year people say the market is bullish um the market is booming or whichever term whichever terms um people use to describe this but uptrend is market situation where we find prices going up going higher and higher by the day why in a downtrend downtrend are usually the direct reverse of an uptrend a downtrending market, like the name implies, is a market where prices are trending downward. You have prices going down and down, and this is generally referred to as bear market. In 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 trading, generally, it is referred to as a bear market. So, it is important that we understand the build-ups of this market structure to be able to effectively trade them. Yeah, that's one thing that is very important. You need to understand how these structures build up to be able to trade them effectively. So now um there's no market structure, there's no where that you find market just going straight up. The fact that the market is bullish doesn't mean that prices are just going to go upward without having to come down. And in the same regards, the, the fact that uh, we are in a bearish market or in a downtrend doesn't mean that prices are just going to go down. So markets, trending markets generally move in forms of impulse, correction, impulse. Every trending market moves in form of impulse, correction, impulse. In an uptrend, we have this to be an impulse. A correction and then a continuation impulse another correction and then an impulse why in a downtrend we have impulse correction impulse 
correction and then another impulse, a continuation. So impulsive legs are more like um these long legs that you have in the direction of the trend. Yeah. Impulsive legs are uh, that aggressive movement to a, towards a particular direction. So in an uptrend, we have we have impulse, our impulse to form a higher high. Basically, uptrending market moves in form of higher highs and higher lows. Yeah. So let's assume um there have been a consolidation or a previous downtrend before this point, and then maybe. Uh, as a result of a major news in the market or something, prices just skyrocket. Have to push up strongly upward from this point. Then we are definitely going to run to a point where we get an eye. This uptrend, like I said earlier in the previous video, I said prices doesn't just move towards a, pa a particular direction. Price movements are. In directly influenced by market buying or selling activities prices are only going to go up where we have more willing buyers than sellers in the market and then prices are only going to go down in a situation where we have more willing sellers than buyers maybe as a result of a bad news or something but more people are, are in panic they want to sell than hold or they want to sell than buy then we are most likely going to get prices going down yeah so a lot of buyers stepped in at this point in time maybe because they feel okay this is a good price to buy gold or bitcoin or any liquid asset you want to use and then a lot of buyers are buying here now this buying pressure forces price up now there are going to be a couple of people who bought at this level but they are not buying to hold for long term. These people just want to buy and then take take out short term gain, lock up their profit, and then look for a better buying opportunities. So these people begin to look out for selling opportunities up here, and then uh, let's say at this level we have a lot of sellers in the market. Now this selling activities once again is going to force prices down so we are going to see um we are going to see a little push to the downside but since the general trend since we have more willing buyers we have just a fraction of the buyers selling at this point so we we are, we are going to get a downward a slight corrective move and then once again people who fail to get buying opportunities who pe people who join the trend maybe um along the line and then it's waiting for a pullback or a correction to get jump in to to fill in their bags are going to step in to buy here now this buying opportunity this buying activities that is going on here is going to create yet again another impulsive leg so we find prices going up because of the presence of new buyers in this market now this will force price up to this point and then the cycle just continues like that you get people probably bought here or bought here looking to take profit and then selling at this point to take profit and then new inflow of buyers coming in to buy at a particular price level and then that forces prices up so it is it is just a cycle it's more of a cycle of buyers and sellers bulls and bears more people stepping in to buy and then uh, a, a fraction of these people taking profit from the market, causing a corrective move, and then new buyers stepping in, and then the cycles just continue like that until um, there are not enough buyers to keep the trend going, and then you see prices begin beginning to nose dive. Yeah, so an uptrend is characterized by higher highs, like I said earlier, and higher lows. And one thing to to take note of is that. There are no degrees or yeah, there are no degrees to which you can classify a higher low. Uh, I don't know if if um the way I said it is right, but what I'm basically saying is you could have a higher low at this point or at this point, provided that your higher low provided that this low doesn't go below the previous low, then it is still an early higher low. 
So if 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 I'm to have this here, then yeah, it's an higher low. And still in the same way, if it's up here, it is still an higher low. I say this because I've heard a lot of people say, well, um, this corrective move should move should take out about fifty percent of this impulsive leg. I don't believe in that ideology. I believe that anywhere within the range is a good is a good area for me. Yeah, it's, a, it's still an higher low. So the same thing is applicable here, and then um, it continues like that. Now, in a downtrend, downtrend are class are characterized by lower highs and lower low. Now, let's look at this um, trend to be the continuation of this market cycle. So it is a market cycle where at a point in time, um, interest in that market is very high and then we have more buyers. Buyers kept stepping into a point where um, we don't have enough buyers anymore to keep the market going up. And then at this point in time, sellers are in control of the market. So now this selling pressure without an equal amount of buyers, we begin to push prices down yeah and um before I, I i jump before i round up with that let me also say that the at any point in time for me based on my own ideology my own style of trading at any point in time where you have um a low that is below the previous low in an uptrend then for me this signifies a a a change of market structure here we have a bullish market structure but at any point in time where there's a change where there's a low that breaks um the previous low then that is a change of market structure and is represents the beginning of a new trend which is in most cases a downtrend so let's say at this point we have a downtrend to this side to this level and then an up upward impulsive leg and then what we get is a selling pressure that pushy, pushes price to form a new low. Now, this low happens to be higher than the imaginary low we have here. So, this at this very point in time, this is a break of market structure. This is a change in market structure. We've changed from an uptrend to a downtrend. Yeah. Now, we have a new low which is lower than the previous low, caused by intense selling pressures. Once again, there are, there are a lot of people that market, market movement, price chart is more of a psychology game. It's something that goes on in the head. The buying activities and selling activities that goes on in the market are done by people like me and you. And it is the way we think or the way we see things that inform what we buy or what we don't buy. So there are a lot of people that at this point are going to believe that, oh, Bitcoin or gold, for example, is still good for a buy. I don't think um, markets are going to just nose dive. I think this is maybe a strong correction to push prices even higher. Now, this set of buyers are going to step in here, but they don't equal the amount of sellers we have in this market. So, prices are going to go up just slightly, and then sellers step in once again to push prices down. We have new set of optimistic buyers here, pushing prices slightly up, and then back down and then this cycle just continues till we get down to a point where sellers are mopped up you don't have enough sellers to keep prices going down before we get a new trend maybe a trend reversal or something so uptrends are defined by higher highs and higher lows downtrends are defined by lower low and lower highs and then once again in the case of of a downtrend the corrective move this pullback we have here could be anywhere within the range of this low and this high so it could be up here and still be a higher low it could be down sorry it could be up here and still be a lower high as well as it could be down here and still be a lower high as long as it doesn't break the previous high then it is still an ld downtrend it is still an ld higher low yeah so that is it with understanding the ideologies behind uptrend and downtrend now a trend line is basically just a line that is that connects true lows in an uptrend as well as highs in, in a downtrend i'm going to switch to my price chart now so that uh, i can show us this before we round up the video 
So I opened my trading view and then the first um the first chart that just came to sight was that of gold. So I'll be using gold chart for this video. This is the four this is the four hours chart for gold and as you can see from this chart uh the market the market structure is forming higher lows. We have a low year and higher low year and then we are currently testing this trend line for a new low. So we could say, oh, this is this is an uptrend until probably we get a break below this trend line. But like I said, a break below the trend line is not automatically going to invalidate um the trend until maybe we get a close below this previous low and then um a corrective move up. Then I'll say okay, we are now in a new trend. This is a change of market structure at this point we'll have a change of market structure yeah so this is uh the chart for gold now there are different ways different traders draw their charts a couple of traders draw trend lines from body to body of their candles a lot of traders do week to week or week to body uh i don't think it's in my place to say which exactly is right or wrong but whichever way you do yours just always try to identify the direction of the trend and another very easy way to draw a trend line that i find very interesting when um identifying the direction of a trend not just to draw a trend line is i love to switch my charts to a line chart like this that way is going to give me a clearer picture of the direction of the whole market you know um putting up your for a lot of people, the old weeks and candlestick colors are just going to get them confused and make the whole thing complicated for them. So another easy way to just go about it is switch. You can switch your charts to line charts. You can do that with trading view as well as most analytic sites. Just switch to a line chart and then follow um, the direction of the trend. You can plot your trend line in the direction of the trend. Now I'm still going to be using this same gold chart to explain um downward market movements i'll use this range what we have um along this as this year to explain uh down trending market so i'm just going to change the time frame this time around to one hour charts and then zoom this closer yeah now on the one hour chart for gold if you zoom this closer, you notice that okay, at this particular point in time, I think um, from year to year, you have prices forming highs. Sorry, we have we are seeing higher lows or lower highs. Sorry. So the same way, I'm still going to switch to a line chart. Let's get to the direction now. This is an high and then a low. A higher low or a lower eye, another low, another lower eye, and then um went came down, went up, failed to break above this. Now coming down to form something that looks like a, an equal low along this level. So this is showing that yeah, this trend is still valid, but the the momentum sellers are beginning to lose their strength they're beginning to lose their momentum and then the moment we get a, a closing above this previous eye which is up here it automatically confirms the change of a trend which um gave birth to the uptrend we just looked up looked at what we have here so that's basically how market structure works that is it with trend lines you can you can look at your chart, do a, a little bit more of back testing to try this out for yourself. And um, if you have any questions, comments, or recommendation, you can drop them in the comment box below. Once again, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the ch and subscribe to the channel for more trading insights. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.